Good day. It's the season of stories, and we've got another one for you. This one is based on fact, and it gives you a chance to decide what you'd like to believe. This video is being shot by a young man named Mimo, and it's being read by an old guy named JB. And it's called The Star of Bethlehem Lecture, and it is based on fact. <clears throat> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for attending this special lecture. As you know, the professor scheduled for the presentation is being kept overnight for observation following his tumble from his bicycle. He, he sent me his as his replacement. I am not a scientist. I do read, and, and what I'm presenting to you tonight is the sum of his astronomical research about which he and I have had numerous discussions. And my otherwise uh, less scientific studies, which we've also had discussions in detail. More than several of the highly educated audience rose and with some clatter exited the room. Those remaining looked about, some shook their heads in consternation, others spoke to their seatmates. One young man, probably early 20s, stood in the middle of the third row, turned to look at those remaining, and with a sweeping verbal and physical gesture, invited them to join him in the first three rows and listen. <laughs> The man at the podium, stunned by the initial exit, now looked at the young man in row three and then at the others in the auditorium further black as they, to, to his surprise, actually rose and trundled down the aisles to fill the empty seats in the small auditorium's first three rows. Uh, thanks, kid, the man said into the microphone. You done good. Anything for pop? came the response from the third row sitter. The audience smiled, chuckled among themselves, and then, almost as one, they settled onto their new close-to-the-stage seats, quieted, and turned their attention to the man at the podium before them. Early this morning, the man speaker began, got a call from the hospital. It was about the professor. Now, he and I live next door to each other. I'm in heating and air conditioning. He's in science and astronomy, I'll, but you guys all knew that. We got to be good friends. We had a spot where our properties met, and we would gather there, he and I, and we would talk about the heavens and the magic that was there above us. When I got the call from the hospital that the professor was hospitalized and wanted me to do tonight's lecture, I was honored and then, uh, frankly, terrified. I know pipes and valves and sealants and magic, he claims, because I got his 75-year-old air conditioning system working. It's the magic of the star he wanted me to share with you, not as an astronomer, just as a human being with a question. I asked if he had done a lecture on the star, and he had not. Did he have any writings? Well, his secretary would send some research. I couldn't remember all the things we had talked about. The third row voice called out, it was a grocery cart full of books and papers. <laughs> Please understand, the lecturer nodded to the third row voice, I couldn't read all of them, to which the audience gave an understanding chuckle. So let's start. The air conditioning man began. The star that brought the wise man to that special birth 2,000 years ago was a comet. Maybe. There was one reported in 7 BC, two reported in 5 BC. Now, Comets generally tend to move across the sky, not stay in one place. 7 BC doesn't quite fit either. Of course, no one at the birth ever wrote down what actually happened, or when, or who was actually there. I, <laughs> I wonder if anyone ever found the travel log of the Magi, or even where they actually came from, or how many there were. And all those books and manuscripts and notes the professor's secretary sent 
came the voice from the third row, were all based generally on the same facts. Gives you a chance, the man at the podium said, to believe what you want to believe. Okay, all right, he resumes. Star of Bethlehem, comet or supernova? Well, there was one Eastern notation of a supernova occurring about 7 BC. But there, that appeared for a while once, never again. The star that led the Magi stopped, disappeared, and reappeared. Okay, well, so what about just the planet Jupiter as the star? Now, Jupiter does this start-stop activity, but it's actually just one planet, not bright like a star. And moreover, it does this stop-start activity every year so it probably wouldn't have attracted a lot of attention. About this 7 BC time, Jonas Kepler noted that the planets Jupiter and Saturn appeared and disappeared three times during the course of that year, 7 BC. We saw his star when it rose, Matthew said. The Magi told King Herod, apparently they met the king the star was no longer visible. Well, exactly what happened during the conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter. The two planets came close together, doubling their light, calling attention to themselves, and then, as we on Earth, and they far out in the system, continued to move on various orbits, they drifted apart, their light diminishing. The first time they appeared was in April of 7 BC. Then in the autumn, they were close again and became bright again because their positions and their orbits had changed and they appeared to move backwards. Ah. A second time their light diminished as they separated. And then in December, bright Together, once again, as one star, they stopped. Well, but there is yet another possible star of Bethlehem, and it isn't a star either. It's a combination of light created when Jupiter and the planet Venus and the star Regulus merge, another bright spot in the heavens that have certain mythologies connected with them. For example, Jupiter is sometimes viewed as the king of the planets, and Regulus, translated from Latin, means prince, and the planet Venus, we all know, represents love and birth. Would have occurred during those years, four to seven, could have been that. Guess you know which of the possibilities we finally settled on. And that's about as far as we got, the third row voice acknowledged from the piles of books and manuscripts and letters and articles that came to us. There was one other possibility, the man at the mic noted. It was one of those things that people say they see in the sky. <gasps> A UFO! A voice from the audience called forward, and some would call it that, the man said. But based on the writings of one, and only one man, Matthew, we assume the Magi saw something that was so powerful and theologically so magnetic that they crossed a world to find and honor what it stood over. Whatever it was, a comet, a planet, several planets, a special light that moved, something that only certain specialized people could see. Whatever you choose, it was so special, its ramifications are still being felt 2,000 years later. And with that, the HVAC man closed the book on his notes, bowed to the quiet applause of his audience, and exited saying quietly to himself, <laughs> I did it, Doc. Hope you feel better. Anyway, Merry Christmas. And Merry Christmas to you as well.
holly hanging across the door. Neighbors singing tales of yore. It's so.